everyone. Welcome to my channel. I am Subhash Chandra. In this video, we are going to discuss about piping materials used especially in piping design engineering. And moreover, we are going to cover what a piping design engineer must know as a minimum in piping materials. Because when we say piping materials, we all know that there are immense informations and the level of information in piping uh, materials are like oceans. It is really, really not uh, possible to memorize everything. But as a minimum requirement, there is a criteria that every piping design engineer should know some basis of it. Because when you go to an interview, when somebody asks you about piping material, uh, being a piping designer, you cannot say that I do not know anything about piping material. Because you are working in piping materials every day, at least you should know some basis of it. Nobody expect you to become or to behave like an expert in materials. But everyone will expect you to uh, be uh, or uh, I mean to behave like a good observer. That is what uh, the requirement of the industry is. But especially if you are a piping metal engineer, then you should have a different level of knowledge. But here for a piping design engineer, what should be the minimum requirement that I mean, what should be the minimum knowledge that you should have in piping materials. That is what I am trying to share in this video. Please, first of all, working in this industry, we must know what is piping material is about. See, piping materials are materials used in piping. How, on what uh, the pipes are made, on what elbows are made, and what uh, the valves are made. Basically, the materials where the fluid comes into contact. So these are the, uh, I mean, a fluid comes into contact or the, the whole body of the piping structure. You have a lot of uh, uh, materials over here. But predominantly, what we have to focus is that, see, though we have lots of materials, we are not using uh, all the materials in one project, right? So we may use only few materials. So in that basis, <clears throat> what I would like to tell you is that as a standard practice in every industry, we use commonly three materials, carbon steel, stainless steel and alloy steel. Of three, uh, rarely we use alloy steel and mostly we use carbon steel and stainless steel. So you only have to prepare yourself in knowing what is this carbon steel is about and what is this stainless steel is about. So generally when we say carbon steel, there are two categories. One is normal carbon steel that we use in everywhere and another one is the LTCS. We call as low temperature carbon steel. <clears throat> so you should know the difference between what is the normal carbon steel and what is LTCS. Uh, basically you have uh, the normal carbon steel and as well as uh, LTCS and in SS also you have various uh, material grades actually. But you don't have to memorize everything. See, when you are working in a project, you will have certain materials. Like mostly you will be using carbon steel and mostly you will be using uh, SS steel. You just have to remember this material grade. You should know what is the material grade. Uh, material grades are defined like, uh, as I said, ASTM A106 grade B. So what is the metal grade? If you are, you must be able to tell the metal grade. For flanges, we all know that is ASTM A105 B16.5. So basically, you must be able to share these things actually. And moreover, we should understand. See, when somebody asks you where carbon steels are used, see, being a piping design engineer, you are not authorized to select the materials. At least that much clarity we should have. So who selects the material? It is the material and corrosion engineers, <coughs> or I'm sorry, it is a material and corrosion engineers or piping material experts who prepare the piping specification. But still, you should know the basis of it, right? See, carbon steels are used in uh, services where there is no corrosion or where there is a very <coughs> minimum corrosion and uh, the, for the temperature less than 425 degrees Celsius. And stainless steels are used uh, more than uh, in high uh, temperatures, but predominantly stainless steels and alloy steels are used for where high corrosion is there. You can uh, find systems where there is no temperature, I mean uh, low temperature, but still <coughs> stainless steels are used. That is because of the corrosive nature of the fluid. It is not just because of the temperature stainless steels are used. <coughs> stainless steels are used based on various factors. One of the factors is temperature and other factor is corrosion. So predominantly in most cases it will be a corrosion <coughs> because stainless steel withstands corrosion uh, better than carbon steel. So we should have this uh, common knowledge and other than these materials, what are the other materials we use? There are different other materials. There are uh, uh, FRP, <coughs> there are GRE pipings 
I mean, there are uh, CPVC pipings which are used in acid systems, and um, I think there are HDA, uh, HDPE, there are LLRTP. Hmm. These are known as non-metallic. So we can classify metallic and non-metallic. In metallic, we use carbon steel, uh, stainless steel, and alloy steel. Even if you say that, so I mean, I mean, in an interview, if somebody asks whether do you have an experience in alloy steel, you can openly say it. Uh, it need not be that you need to have an experience on everything. Hmm. It happened to me once I told them that I never come across alloy steel, not now, I mean uh, in my uh, earlier interview, I never come across uh, alloy steel, uh, I mean uh, alloy piping material because I never worked on it. So it is uh, acceptable to say that you have never worked on certain piping. But what generally happens, people being in interview, they tend to act uh, in such a way that they know everything. It's not the requirement basically. You should be confident on what you have learned and what you have experienced. So basically when it comes to piping material, you should know about the generic standards that you are using in your project. <coughs> basically for all piping fittings, pipes, flanges, gaskets, what are these uh, uh, material standards because see material standards and design, dimensional standards are totally different. Don't get confused with material standards and dimensional standards. Okay. Say for an example for flanges B16.5 is the dimensional standards and for material A105 is the material standard. <coughs> Likewise, you have for piping B36.10 and B36.19 is the dimensional standard and A106 grade B and A53 grade B are uh, material standard. So you should know what is the difference between dimensional standard and as well as uh, material standard and what are the common materials that we generally use actually. Uh, right from, uh, uh, I mean, uh, valves and uh, pipes, fittings, everything you should know. And especially when it comes to valves, you must be able to recognize what is the trims of it because this is what generally happens when we talk about trims piping design engineers should know what type of trims are used in the particular well so uh, don't ignore that uh, saying that it is a role of a piping metal engineer because piping design engineers are uh, I mean uh, equally important and equally responsible for checking the data sheets of the valves and those things so uh, you must know what are the trims are used because these are, I mean, as I said, you must be a good observer. This is what everybody expect you to have actually. So being a piping design engineer, you should know what valve you are using. If you are using CS valve, what is the trim? Generally for CS valve, there will be a <coughs> SS trim and for SS valve, there will be again SS trim will be there or alloy uh, trims will be there. So uh, in order to know about the valve trims, you can refer the API. Uh, 600 or API 602, API 603, these are uh, valve standards, you will be able to find the trim materials of uh, the valves used in the, I mean uh, the trims used in the valves basically. Sorry that I did not explain what are trims. Trims are nothing but wetted parts inside the valves actually. Wetted part means the parts which are comes in contact with the fluid. So if you uh, go through these standards like API 600, 602 and 603, <coughs> you will be able to understand more. So these are the basic material knowledge that you should have. You don't have to be really really uh, expert in piping material. When somebody asks you to tell what is the material of the flange, you must be able to tell the flange material. When somebody asks you to tell about the material of the pipe, you should tell. So uh, and conceptually you should know how, why these uh, particular materials are selected. And few other information such as we must know the basis of selection of material. See the basis of selection of material is not based on one factor. <clears throat> As I said, it is based on different factors. One is a temperature. Uh, I mean the temperature and the service conditions of the fluid and uh, corrosive nature and uh, the life of the material and the cost of the material is another actually and uh, the coro I mean uh, the toxicity. So there are different uh, parameters are evaluated. But this activity generally piping design engineers uh, will never do because. This is an activity which are given for, I mean, which are generally carried by the piping, uh, the material corrosion engineers and piping material engineers. So generally piping design engineers do not select the materials. It will be recommended by the client, the MOC, I mean the material of construction will be recommended by the client and then the material specifications are prepared accordingly. So I don't want to get into that actually. So what I'm trying to say is that in general, we must know why carbon steels are selected. Carbon steels are selected just because the corrosion levels are less. See carbon steel materials are selected just because the corrosion levels are less but it doesn't mean that corrosion level is completely zero. 
See, there are uh, systems where carbon steels are used and corrosions are still high, <coughs> where the corrosion allowance of the carbon steel will be increased actually. So there are various ways, I don't have to go get into that actually. So basically you must know the basis of the piping material selection and different materials that we generally use in our project. So do not have to lie everywhere, you do not have to act uh, in such a way that you know everything. You should only say what you know. So be confident in preparing what you know. Uh, I mean what you have experienced so that it will help you uh, doing, uh, I mean giving a, a better performance in the interview. So I hope that this video has helped you to understand what is the minimum requirement that I mean minimum piping material knowledge that a uh, piping design engineer should possess basically. So I will meet you in another fantastic video. If you like this video and if you like my teaching and if you like my content, please do subscribe to my channel so that it gives me a motivation to make more and more videos. I will meet you in another fantastic video. Until then, bye from Subhash Chandra.